Uh, so I just want to ask you to pose some questions in the chat box if you have any. Uh, so we have uh, earlier three speakers. So I just put some questions of business. Uh, we have okay. some more detail so, on that. Yeah, so the battery swapping business in the, in the Philippines is uh, mostly operated by the uh, vehicle suppliers themselves. Because uh, the problem with the, as mentioned earlier, the problem with the operators, they don't, they have limited the financial capacity to invest. So normally this is invested on by the operators, by the suppliers themselves. And in some cases, it's a, uh, it's a joint venture. Yeah. And um, okay, the main issue with battery swapping is um, it adds actual cost on, on the operations of the vehicles. Because unlike direct charging, a battery swapping will require greater or more human resource cost. So uh, that is the main issue. But in some cases, that is the only solution that you can have because um, in the Philippines, it is the suppliers, although they are better financially compared to the operators, the vehicle suppliers and manufacturers in the Philippines for tricycles are also are, are not big companies really. These are also small and medium enterprises. So they cannot also invest on a lot, a, a lot on the battery on 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 on, on, the, on bigger batteries to be list out. So, so that's why right now the main strategy is to bring in third party investors on the on the on, on the battery um, themselves. Yeah. So so normally they would go to the battery swapping stations normally during midday, and then their battery gets swaps. And that the swapping time is around 15 minutes. So I hope I answered your question. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks, Patmani. Uh, just related to that, uh, I have a question from my colleague Alvin to Vittorio. Uh, so if you would advise Nepal or other countries in the region where light vehicles are more dominant and moving towards stronger electrification of uh, LEVs like two-wheelers and three-wheelers, uh, which would you say are the main standards that need to be prioritized and set in place as soon as possible? Or where should they start? Yeah, I feel that, uh, as I before, I feel the most relevant uh, from my experience are the safety. Because we want to promote a new technology to have a better life, a better quality of the air and so on. And if it comes with vehicles that are unsafe, uh, the message is lost. And the vehicle are not used use because people uh, become skeptical on them. And the other, I feel, uh, are the one regarding, uh, but th this largely depends on the way in which you want to put the vehicle on the way, uh, on the road, the charging port. Because at the end, uh, the batteries work, uh, if uh, a model to charge a battery with swapping, with fast charging, with standard charging can be done. It's not a matter of today, but for instance, there are new lithium technologies that for vehicle like two wheelers where the total energy is very limited can open the door to very the door to very high fast charging so very short term without big big big, big power so for the two wheelers i feel that both the swapping and this technology open the door to three wheelers to very interesting solution as said at the end, the big, any more different, uh, or anyway, not necessarily better than the standard car is the better. So safety and charging are the two issues. Thanks a lot, Vittorio. Uh, now I have a question to Umesh. Uh, this was the question from Bhushan. Uh, Umesh, I, I hope you are still there. Uh, so you have presented the Safa Tempo and the, the operation and maintenance issues in Nepal. So what are the main maintenance problems faced by Safa Tempo right now? Could you elaborate a bit? Uh, right now, uh, actually, at present, after having a you know, new, new type of uh, motor and uh, drive system technology, new drive system technology, we do have a very less maintenance cost Initially, we used to have a DC motor and a DC type of a controller with a brush motor because it is a you know 25 years old technology where we used to use a lead acid battery and a DC motor with a brush. 
and we had a carbon brush problem where and tear of a DC motor com competitors. This was a you know uh, very huge problem in the past. But now we have uh, already changed into uh, BM AC motor and uh, AC motors, and uh, drive system has been already changed, and we are using a lithium battery pack right now. So uh, right now, uh, in case of a uh, batteries and in case of a uh, uh, um, drive system maintenance also uh, very less problem we are facing. So our operation cost also has uh, you know gone down. Uh, uh, even though our lithium batteries and uh, uh, the, this drive system initial cost is higher, but uh, in the long term uh, it is very much beneficial right now. And uh, uh, right now we are not. Uh, fishing that much uh, for a maintenance. There is much problem in a maintenance. Yeah. yeah so your ma maintenance problem is lessened now with the new technologies. Yeah. Yes. 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 yes right. Great. Uh, I have one more question to you, Umesh, from Prachin. Uh, can you elaborate a more fast charging stations, uh, like future of those fast charging station in Nepal? Uh, how policies uh, from government and private sector are, uh, can enable it, in, uh, can in, enable e uh, easy charging to promote EVs in Nepal? Yeah, uh, basically, uh, if we see uh, overall aspects, uh, I always tell that uh, in a uh, there should be actually uh, right now it is just the opposite. Uh, the decision that has been made, uh, uh, the government is calling uh, who are interested to put a charging station uh, in the, near the highway or something like that. And the, what is the sustainability of those business? That is a very big question mark. You know, who uh, there should be? I think there should be uh, uh, like a, in a geographical condition of Nepal. Uh, in every 50 kilometer or every 70 kilometer, there should be one EV zone or EV charging station. That should be the concept. And yeah, there, there could be uh, um, another type of a charging station that if anybody wants to run by their own. But there should be some concept that uh, government should uh, uh, elaborately you know, uh, facilitate to develop a charging station in uh, different locations of a highway and uh, intercity uh, ways. That is my concept of a EV zone. And EV zone does not mean only the charging station. It should facilitate uh, the maintenance and uh, backup of the uh, you know, electric vehicle. So uh, that is basically the concept that uh, we need to go on. Yeah, so we can think of the future. Yeah. Uh, I would for this for this round, I will put one last question. So we can we can again go back to Q and A at the end. So my uh, my question is to Vittorio from Bhushan. So how are ISO and IEC standards different from GBT standards from China, as most of the vehicles coming from Nepal will be from China? Also in Europe, eh? we have a common supplier. Let me say, <laughs> I'm not joking. Um, um, in general, up to now, uh, Chinese uh, in some part were uh, not so forerunner as Europe, US, uh, Japan, Korea, and so they take advantage in, of the European and, China and Japanese standard that goes under the international ISO IEC brand or the American, the ACI uh, one. They in general are seen as applied one to one as a carbon copy where it was convenient, applicable, effective. In other cases, they make modification changes in order to fit better their needs. Now, uh, you know, Chinese market is becoming a forerunner in the field. And so I see some cases in which they are changing approach. There is, for instance, an activity, a joint activity between Japanese and Chinese standardization organization to make a new standard for the CFAS charging at higher current, more than 500 amps. And this is something they do as foreigners. So as in any experience, they learn and then they take the role. But in general, the logic is try independently from the logo and the, and the 
element as much as possible the same approach when convenient and specified, for instance, the question of type one versus type two. In US, all distribution of electricity is in Japan is single phase. So they make a connector single phase. In Europe, there are also three phases and we need the three phase. So what's the environment to push the differentiation in that case? Great. Uh, thanks a lot. 